So what happens if it seems like my baby just doesn't take to the snoo? You know, how, what, what does that mean for me? What do I do? What do you suggest? Of course, nothing works 100% of the time for every child. But if you think about it, most babies do like to be held and rocked and shushed and cuddled. So, um, and that's what they had 24 seven in the womb. So it's a very, very, very high likelihood that your baby is gonna like the, the, um, like the snoo and respond well to it. If you put the baby down, you see your baby's waking up a lot. So you say, oh my God, my baby is sleeping no more in snoo than they slept you know, in, in, the, in the bassinet. Oftentimes, that has to do with feeding. You have to make sure your baby is getting enough to eat. And the reason I'm telling you this is because a lot of women, especially when you're nursing, you'll nurse the baby until the baby stops, and oftentimes just on one breast. But that's not the most efficient way to do a feeding. After five or six minutes on the breast, the baby's emptied that side. The milk is still coming a drop at a time, but the big flow of milk is passed. The other breast is full and ready to go. So after five or six minutes, even if the baby's still nursing, it helps to switch the baby to the second side. And after five or six minutes there, to switch them back to the first side again. That way they get more milk because the number one reason why babies wake up despite snoo is because they're hungry. And that's the way we want it to be. That's the way we designed it. So the number one thing if a baby is, is waking up a lot is making sure that they're getting enough milk. The next thing is making sure the swaddling is right. Some babies can get their arms out of the swaddle or bend their arms up. And if that happens, it's not gonna work well. The arms have to stay down and have to be very snug. And we have a couple of tricks and techniques on the website that people can use to make sure that the arms stay down. So that's the second thing. If the arms are getting out, snoo's not gonna work well for you. The third thing is setting the right level of sound and motion. If you have a baby who's particularly spirited or just is very sensitive to everything that's going on around them and even to their internal sensations, they may need a little bit more motion and sound to sleep through the night. So the next thing we recommend is that people set the level up, uh, lock it on the level one or the level two, which is a little faster and more jiggly, as if you're driving your baby in the car all night long, which will be helpful for you. I mean, you don't want to drive all night long, but imitating that is helpful. And then the, th the fourth thing that can happen is that there are some babies who are side stomach babies. So remember there are five S's that imitate the womb to calm the baby down. There's swaddle, side stomach, shushing, swinging, and sucking. Some babies are sound babies. Man, that's what they need the sound. Some babies are motion babies. They need that jiggly motion. They all need to be swaddled. But some of them are side stomach babies. They do not like being on their backs. And we have to keep them on their backs. That's the only safe position for them. So there are ways that we can adapt the, the sleep sack to make them feel like they're on their back. So for example, one of the things we do is fold a, a little towel into a square and put it inside the sleep sack underneath their knees and feet to get them elevated three or four inches. So it's like they're in a seated position, but they're still on their backs. We also have little lifters that we can put underneath the feet, under the baby's head, to get the head elevated a little bit, and that can help them as well.